seen plenty of two-bit gunfighters. They know there's probably going to be a shootout. And they're anxious to see who's going to win. How about you? Aren't you even curious? I know that nine times out of ten, you're going to outdraw the other bomb. I just don't know if this is the tenth time or not. Are you going to go down and chase that guy out of town or not? What if he won't go? Then you kill him. Table. And when you get back, I have a bartender count to three. 
And we'll run over, get our guns, and have it out. All right. All right, John, count to three, slow. One. Two. Oh, wait a minute. I, I got a better idea. I'm surprised you fall for an old trick like that, Mr. Gortz. That is the filthiest trick I've ever heard of. Oh, I've done lots filthier tricks than that. You all seen that. You are my witnesses. Anybody who gives this man a gun is going to have to answer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, bye. <laughs> it ever occur to you what a soft life the sheriff's got so long as he's got you around? When the governor of the territory comes to town, the sheriff greets him. When a gunfighter comes to town, he sends you. you. Trying to make me unhappy in my work, Doc? I'm just trying to point out how you're being took advantage of. I remember when you first come here a year ago on your way to the gold fields. What happened to the gold fields? I'm going. I'm just waiting for the right time. Yeah. You'll never go. You'll get killed first. You've got the most dangerous job in the world. Uh, what about yours? Dentistry? Never heard of a dentist who had to leave town every time he pulls a tooth. Nine times out of ten, he gets the wrong one. Well, I just had a run of bad luck lately. Never known a dentist who had to carry a gun or practice his fast draw all the time? I got a right to defend myself, don't I? Why don't you get into something else? Want some uh, lunch, Max? I want my gun back. That's what I want. You sure that really is your gun? It's my job to check these things, you know. It never occurred to you I might have another gun stashed away someplace, did it? It occurred to me you might have a rifle on your saddle. It's over there. I'm not going to take this stuff. Are going to be there? Well, sure. But you want to talk to him about us anyway, don't No, you? I don't. I don't want to talk to him about us. I don't even want to talk to him about the weather. I don't want to talk to him. I suppose we could get rid of him after he's eaten. You really don't know what's going on, do you, Trilby? Shall we say 5.30? Oh, and why don't you wear your hat? Because I look silly in that hat. 5.30, then. In your hat. You're always saying how crazy you think she is and how you wouldn't have her even as a gift. And yet every time I turn around, you're buttering up to her again. I know I'm faster than you are, don't Yeah, you? I just think it's childish to act the way you do. If you like the girl... I'm warning you, Doc. Billy Joe Bixby. I want you to tell your pa and your brothers to quit rustling cattle before they make me mad. Why don't you tell them yourself? All right, I will. Where is he? He's in Mexico. How long do you think it'll take him to sell those stolen cattle and get back up here? You better watch what you say. Why? Don't think I'm so stupid I never heard of the word slander. Never mind that you've heard of the word. How do you spell it? Slander. 
S-L-U. S-L-U. S-L-U-E-N-D-A-U-E-R. Slander. I knew that. Sam Bixby's gonna explode right in your face one day. You wanna walk over to the office with me? No, I can't. I got a patient in 15 minutes. Oh, God. Now, what does that mean? Just means, oh, God, what hast thou wrought in the dental business? I'll see you later, Doctor. Did you chase that guy out of town? No, I just took his guns away from him. How'd you do that? I told him I wanted them. And he just gave them to you? Yep. You just told him you wanted his guns, and he gave them to you? Yep. And he's the number one gunfighter in the West? He was this morning, but I think he slipped a couple of notches during the day. Now, uh, if he comes in here for his guns, don't give them to him. And tomorrow morning, will you come over and show me how to put on my socks? Sorry. What was all that? That's just to show any young smart aleck. If they get too cute with me, I can still pick up a gun and know which end is which. I get the message. You want to play? Not me. I was just about to take a tour of the town and see what's going on. How did you get that gun? Guns! Actually, I bought them. to me. He pulled the wrong tooth. The tooth I wanted full was in my upper right and the tooth he pulled was in my lower left. Well, he probably won't charge Ed. What are you talking about? He ought to knock off 10%. That's when I started shooting. Well, you're all right now. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh, I'll give you a gun back in the morning. Why don't you just fry up some chicken fried steaks? Oh, chicken fried steak, you'd eat them for breakfast if you could. I do all the time. Well, that's not what you're going to get tonight. I think I'll just go on down to the Busy Bee for supper tonight and you can be alone with him. I don't want to be alone with him. That's when. You have to be here tonight. Because he might want to ask you something. Like what? You know like what. Father, you're going to have to give me just a little help. Otherwise, you're going to have a 23-year-old spinster on your hands. 29. Don't you ever say that again. It's 23. And even at that, it's almost impossible. I don't know what you want him for. Any man who'd turn down a good job in the feed and grain business. Why should he take a job? All he has to do is marry me and wait, and someday the whole business will belong to him. That is the most heartless thing a girl ever said to her father. What is that you're cooking? Rabbit stew. It's a recipe I learned in my Eastern finishing school. It wasn't an Eastern finishing school, Trilby. You took some cooking lessons in Kansas City. Well, do you have to blab every single thing you know? Besides, Kansas is east of here. Everywhere is east of here. There's more to tie now. You go let him in and for once act like... I'd be a little welcome in our house. Why deceive him like that? Come 
Hello? What did you want to come here tonight for? Can I come in? We went through this the last time, remember? I had to push open the door and fight my way past you, and your reading glasses got broken in the scuffle. Then Trelby came charging in, and in the fight with her, you fell down and wrenched your back. Then when the doctor got here, you got in a fight with him and fell down in his specimen bottles and got glass slivers up Oh, here. shut up. Shut up and come on in. Then after he got the glass slivers out of your popo, you tried to hit the doctor with your fishing pole and got the fish hook stuck in the back of your head. And... For Christ's sake. Popo? Or whatever you call it in your family. We call it your butt in this family, not your popo. Your butt. Well, whatever. What is the matter out here? Don't you forget that bringing him here was your idea. So? So you better tell him that when he's in my house, he better damn well shut up when I tell him to shut up. Now, you two silly boys try to get along with each other. But we'll be ready in a minute. I'd like to hit her right in the face when she talks like that. And you better get it through your head that I intend to live for a long, long time. And by that I mean it's going to be a cold day in hell before you get your hands on my business. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Honey, what happened? <laughs> My red blew up. My mustache. What? Oh, it just blew up. Well, it must have been something else. <laughs> what was a rabbit stew? What could be in a rabbit stew stew to make it blow up? I don't know, but that's what it did. <laughs> Mordecai. Chicken fried steak is fine, Miriam. Trilby. What do you want, Trilby? Chicken fried steak. Three chicken fried steaks coming up right away, folks. What was all that? Oh, you wouldn't understand. I'd better go say hello to the sheriff. Did you know he called his butt his popo? Who calls his butt his popo? Oh, well, Miss Beaver, Sheriff. What happened to your dinner at Trilby's house? She was cooking a rabbit stew and it uh, blew up. What? Her rabbit stew blew up. I'm getting so damn sick of your smart Alex ass. Yeah, I hope you two enjoy your supper. Mm. Where's Ed? Why? Is he supposed to be here? No, but he came by and got his gun this evening. I was just afraid that... Uh... Enjoy your supper, Doc. Trilby, I wouldn't mention that little accident you had at the house. Nobody's going to believe it. What could possibly have been in that rabbit stew to make it blow up? I don't want to talk about it. Where'd you get the rabbits you put in that stew? Where do you think I got them? I went out and shot them. Of course. One of the bullets must have still been in the rabbit, and when you cooked it, it... All right, you tell me. I don't have a clue. We're all out of chicken fried steak, folks. Damn, damn, damn! Every time I get mixed up with you, something always goes wrong. How is he supposed to know they're going to run out of chicken fried steak? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the time he stuck the fish hook in the back of my head and threw me out that second story window. You stuck the fish hook in the doctor's head, and he threw you out the window. No, no, no it wasn't that way at all. You can either have fried liver or fried eggplant. Have you made up your mind yet, folks? Liver! Cremated! Well, that was a pretty little scene in the restaurant tonight, wasn't it? Mrs. Beaver was pretty upset about the whole thing. 
I thought I had the old bat lined up for the kill tonight. And that liver aid plant wrangle of yours blowed the whole thing sky high. I guess overage romance is a fragile thing. Who was talking about romance? What I had her lined up for was... I know what you had her lined up for. All right, if you're too delicate to hear the facts of life. There's a crisis down the mid saloon, man. What you down there right away? What's the crisis? A drunk. A drunk is a crisis to a saloon. He's a meanin'. You better hurry. All right. Try to handle it without any gunplay. Maybe you'd like to handle it yourself. Quit being so goddamn smart and get down there and do your job. Yes, sir. Let's take it easy, friend. Was that guy? Why was he trying to kill me? Well, I don't think it was you in particular, Mordecai. I think he would have been perfectly happy just to kill anybody. You still here? Not only am I still here, but I know who that guy is. Who is he? He's my pa's oldest and dearest friend. There wasn't a war together. And he's been staying at our ranch the last couple of weeks. My pa ain't gonna take this light. No, I guess he won't, Billy Joe. They rode Quantrill's Raiders together. Somebody's gonna have to pay for this. Now, you don't want me to think you're threatening me, do you, Billy Joe? But I'm liable to get all mean and irritable when I think someone's threatening me. Have a couple of the boys carry him out to Billy Joe's horse and strap him over the back. My horse? Me? Oh, not my horse. Oh. I ain't gonna ride all the way home in the dark with that thing behind me. He's your daddy's dearest and oldest friend. Take him home with you, Billy Joe. He'll be good company for you. Uh, uh, oh, no. Is, is there something law that says I have to? Take that thing all the way home in the dark, tied to the back of my horse. Ain't no law says you can't dump him in the first ravine you come to. That's an awful thing to say. You could cut him up in little pieces and stuff him down the rabbit hole. I just wish to God, God could hear you say those terrible things you say.
the matter with you? Ah, he's drunk. No. Just gone crazy. <laughs> What's new about that? <laughs> What's the matter with you? My horse. What's the matter with your horse? My horse. Bucky O'Neill. Is he dead? As dead as I've ever seen him. What did you kill Bucky for? I didn't kill him. Somebody did. What did he kill Bucky for? Well, you know how Bucky was when he got all liquored up. He was horsing around, goosing the girl, spitting people's drinks. <laughs> and he had his gun out, playfully shoving it in everybody's belly, cocking the hammer back like it was going to blast them. <laughs> then, the, then the deputy come in, and he acted like he didn't want Mr. Bucky to do that no more. Bucky pulled his gun up playfully, and the deputy shot him right through the heart. Bucky had his gun out, and the deputy beat him? Bucky that drunk, or the deputy that fast? Deputy's that fast. I don't understand why you bung his body clear out here. Why? Because he was your oldest and dearest friend, Paul. Bucky? Bucky O'Neill? I couldn't stand the bum when we was in the army. The war was over, I still couldn't stand the bum. Now that he's dead, I don't think I like him quite as much as I used to. Ah, uh, Been riding four days and nights and... Just got back here. I'm starved. Suli Blue! Suli Blue! Yeah, Pa? Rustle us up something to eat, girl. Even Bobby Ed. Who? Oh, you mean him. Well, what about him? We already had something to eat when you first got home. But I'm still hungry. Well, I better get Grace Dorothy up to help me. My sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's that other one? Mary Mert? Oh, she's been living over with the Johnsons for the past six weeks. Oh, don't you think I even remember that? Uh, just get her something to eat. Tommy, Fred, Sudie, Blue, Bobby, Ed, Mary Mert. All them years, Ma kept having them babies. Giving you all them dumb names. I said to her, you just have one more of them babies. Give it one more of them dumb names. I'm going to head out to California in the middle of the night. She had to go right on. Suli Blue and Tommy Fred. It must have been me and Mary Mert. We're the youngest. Oh, for Christ's sake! Well, I care which one of you is who. All I know is there's too many people around here. All of you don't shut up until I get something to eat. But you and Ma was regular sweethearts over the years, wasn't you, Pa? Let me put it this way. I didn't exactly push her down that well. But when she fell in on her own, didn't exactly go out of my mind with grief, neither. Bucky 
he wasn't your oldest and dearest friend? You and Ma weren't regular sweethearts, so... This is what it means to grow up. What do you mean, grow up? You're 38 years old! wasn't your oldest and dearest friend. That Debbie thought he was, because I told him he was. What's your point? We can't let him get away with this, can we? No, you're right. That guy's been stepping on my toes. Never since he took that job. What are we gonna do, Pa? We ain't gonna do anything. Good. No. Pass out mm. the brains in this family. I sure shall gut them all. Go. I'll let you all know what we're gonna do about this. Day. When we're finished. I want you all to go out. Bury Bucky. Tonight? Tonight. No and Bucky. He'll probably start to smell any minute. On purpose. I guess it was either an old enemy of yours or a new enemy of mine. shots? Well, you sure as hell heard something. Did you see anybody out there that could have been shooting at us? Well, there are several people on the street. Did any of them have shotguns in their hands? No. I think I noticed that they had. Something like, like that one's for the Bixby's? Yeah, of course not. Why not? It's against the law, shoot out windows. They'd arrested me. But then they don't know for sure who it was that done it. They know. But if they don't, they suspect. How? I don't want to go into this no more. Just shut up about it. Here comes an alcohol. Well, now. You're back from Mexico, Mr. Bixby. You're back, and your sons have brought you to town for a little celebration. I think that's nice. They don't bring me nowhere. I go where I want to. I see. How's the cattle business? Well, is the price of beef going to hold up? How should I know? Did uh, anything happen down at the sheriff's office tonight? Disorderly charge, but we do that every night anyway. Nothing else? No. 
Sudden gust of wind blew out a couple of windows. Gust of wind? They come up suddenly in this part of the country, you know. Well, it's nice having you back anyway, Mr. Bixby. Boys. Oh, they hardly even noticed what you did. They thought you was just a big gust of wind. I'm just telling everybody they better shut up. Well, how's the town treating you, Max? You call this a town? You seem to spend an awful lot of time in this place, Max. My God, is that against the law, too? No, I was just curious, though, as to where you get your money. Well, it's none of your business, but I earned it. How? I got a job. Where? At the feed and grain store. You mean you're working for Harry Jackson? How many feed and grain stores are there? You like working for that guy? I got out of my mind about working at all. He's been pretty nice to me. Met that crazy daughter of his? Sure. She brings me my lunch every day. Yeah. Don't you think she's crazy? I don't know what you're talking about. She's just a nice, pretty girl that uh, brings me my lunch every day. Ooh. Glad everything's going so well for you, Max. You're not glad. And I wouldn't give a damn if you were. If you don't give me my gun back pretty soon, I'm going to take yours away from you. You let me know in plenty of time, Max. Because I think I could sell a lot of tickets to a show like that. Well, I think that was a dumb way of handling it. Bixby already thinks he can get away with anything he wants to around here. Now you let him shoot our windows out, and all you do about it is play some cute little girlish game with him. What do you mean, girlish? Well, that's the way girls do things. They never come right out and say what they mean. Who's that? I'll find out. Ride into town? Right. Where are you from? El Paso. That's a long, long trip. It doesn't matter if you got the time. Name's Mordecai McAllister. I'm deputy sheriff here. Will Jameson. Mordecai? Yep. Are you one of the chosen people? Yes, yes, I am. I don't believe I've ever known anybody of the Jewish persuasion in law enforcement work before. Jewish? I'm not Jewish. You said you were one of the chosen people. I thought you meant Methodist. They always told me we were the chosen people. Can I be of any help to you, Mr. Jameson? Well, I'm just riding through here looking for a man. He could have come through here about two weeks ago. What's his name? Max Gortz. You mean good old Max? What do you mean, good old Max? Well, that's what everybody calls him. He wrote in about two weeks ago, just like you said. And in just that short amount of time, he's established himself as a solid, hard-working citizen and endeared himself to everyone who's come in contact with him. Max Gortz endeared himself to somebody? No, oh, everybody. Either that's a different Max Gortz, and it doesn't seem likely there's two of them, or you're out of your mind, mister. Now, can you tell me where I can find it? Take you to him. Let's go over to my office for a minute. Go right in there, Mr. Jameson. What in the hell are you? Go right in there and I'll talk to you. And the belt. What do you want with Max? Do you know who Max is? He used to be a gunfighter, and he probably, sometime in the past, had a showdown with someone close to you, and you've been on his trail. Oh, I got an idea. Why don't you and Max settle all your differences 
But a good old-fashioned fist fight. Fist fight? Yeah. I haven't had a fist fight in 25 years. And I'll bet you Max doesn't even know how. Well, then you better figure out something else, because I'm not going to have any more shootouts in this town. How long are you going to keep me in here? I don't know yet. What are the charges against me? Riding into town without a permit. Keep him in there till about sundown. Now, what kind of talk is that? Max Gortz has got a job at the Feed and Gray store, a job that was offered to me, and I foolishly turned it down. Max is making three times as much money as I am. He has to work 10 hours a day. I have to work 24 hours a day. Now, for some reason, I don't have the guts to quit this job, so do me a favor and fire me. Will you, Sheriff? No, there's no need to go off half cocked. Short money, I am perfectly willing to take. Criticism, I am not. Got it, Sheriff? I don't blame you a bit, Mordecai. I'll hold that guy here till about sundown, and then I'll let him out. But I won't give him his gun. Is that what you want, Mordecai? Exactly that way. Consider it done. I'm a pretty prominent man in my part of the country. I'm damn well in the country. All the plumbers in this mine deal had better shut up until I get around to them. Where's your outhouse? Uh, straight outside, sir, and around the back. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. The other one taken? Help yourself. <sighs> care for a cigar, stranger? I don't care if I do. There you go. Thanks. You! Go for your gun, Gortz. I ain't got a gun. You gotta believe me. I ain't got a gun. Come to think of it, I don't either. Well, do we have to stand here in this cold, smelly place? Besides, I want to pull my pants up. Well, so do I. Let's get out of this crappy place and have a drink. All right. But don't you try to pull anything funny. Like what? Some fellow by the name of Jameson just rode in with Very us. funny. Oh, hello, Mr. Jameson. So, you two boys are made up. Well, why don't I buy you both a drink to celebrate? No. No. Well, uh, give me a drink. We have to try that again, Max. I'll run your sad little butt right out of this nice little town. Let me buy you a drink, Deputy. I'm on duty. head tonight. Drive them back to our ranch. Tomorrow night, take a hundred head from the Perkins place. Then the night after that, we'll start driving them all down to Mexico. Now, I hope to hell there ain't no questions. Well, I have to go to Mexico. You know damn well you do. Bobby Fred's turn to stay home and watch after the girls. You must mean Bobby Ed or Tommy Fred. There ain't no Bobby Fred. I don't give a damn. All right, let's get moving.
scared the hell out of me. You did <laughs> fine, Truby. Let's uh, get to our horses and go on back to town. We decided to wait up in case you all wanted something to eat. Did you get all your business finished? God damn, Bucky. We ought to know he'd come back and haunt us. It's because all them terrible things Paul Witten said about him after he got killed. That wasn't Bucky, you dumb, stupid idiots. Oh, yes, it was, Paul. I recognize his voice just as plain as anything. You didn't hear nobody's voice, except that girl yelling, screaming, being raped. Some girl was being raped? At this time of the night? Where? <laughs> it ain't a fixed subject for girls your age. But don't you think we ought to know about those things so we can protect ourselves against them? No. If nothing else, the women in this family are going to remain pure and unblemished. For how long? For as long as necessary. We're so pure the hell wouldn't have us. Well, I've been pure for so long it's coming out of my ears. When are you going to get us some husbands, Paul? I ain't going to continue this filthy discussion no longer. All of you shut up. I gotta think of something. Something suspicious about all that fall de raw out there tonight. I didn't hear no suspicious fall de raw, Paul. All I heard was the ghost of Bucky practicing his old trade. Will you all shut up? If you all hadn't turned so completely yellow out there tonight. I'd have figured out the whole thing on the spot. Well, but, Paul, it was you that yelled, let's get the hell out of here. Shut up! Just shut up! Yes. I may have a little job for you girls next few days. Doing what, Paul? I don't know yet. I gotta figure the whole thing. We're gonna have Bucky's ghost after us every time we go out and steal a few cattle from now on? All right, I warned you. The next one that mentioned that certain party's ghost gets it right in the brain pan. All right, Paul. But if it wasn't... For that certain party's ghost. What party's ghost was it? I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna sleep in the barn tonight. <laughs> Why the hell should I sleep in the barn? Now, the next one that opens his mouth, or her mouth, goes right out of the barn and sleeps there for the next week. Good morning, Mordecai. Good morning, Francie. Uh, put some ham and eggs. Eggs over easy. Toast the toast coffee, please. Same for me. Except sausage instead of ham. Truby. Oh, uh, chicken fried steak, corn in the cob, mashed potatoes, apple pie with whipped cream and cheese. Maybe we should your peas on the side. Bread and coffee, cream and sugar with the coffee. Yeah. Oh. I still don't see why I didn't just arrest them. Yeah. Well, if I'd caught them red-handed stealing cattle. That's how we caught them, red-handed stealing cattle. Uh, we caught them about to steal some cattle. Yeah, in about just ten more seconds. You're right, Doc, but if I'd brought them in every... Rancher in these parts would have ridden to town with all their cow hands, broken into the jail, dragged the Bixby's out and lynched them. And there's nothing I or anybody else could have done about it. 
Well, why'd anybody want to do anything about the Bixby's getting lynched? I know you're right. They sure have been asking for it for a long time. Anyway, I have given them their last warning. Do you think the Bixby's will find out it was us what done it to them? Well, I won't tell them if you won't. She's always had a reputation of being a crazy, but she's never stayed out all night before. Sit down, Max, and watch the fur fly. So, this is where you've been all night. Now, who would spend the night in a place like this? That means you've been with him. Mm -hmm. And him. Do you think for one minute that I consider that a chaperone? Since when does a 23-year-old girl need a chaperone? Watch it, Pa. Where have you been all night? On official business for the sheriff's office. Well? On official business for the sheriff's office. Have you got any idea what we do with men who keep girls out all night in this territory? We report them to the sheriff. Then the sheriff, rather than handle the matter himself, the job over to me. And I'm afraid I would have to give them, whoever they are, a severe talking to. Well, that does it! You're damn well gonna have to face up to me before long, mister. And I'll take this up with you at home tonight, missy. As for you... Wh whatever happened to that tooth that was bothering you last week? I pull it myself. You thought you were going to get your hands on my teeth, didn't you? Ha! Never! I'd gladly lose every tooth on my head before I let you practice your bloody dentistry on me! Well, he didn't have to go that far. You ever stand me up again like you did last night? And you can find yourself near the girlfriend. Although, where you're going to find one as stupid as me, I don't know. The three Bixby girls are in town. Are they carrying guns? Now, what the hell kind of question is that? Well, if they had been, I suppose you would have wanted me to take them away from them. Anyway, I'll, uh... I'll check and find out what the girls are doing here. I know what they're doing here. They're walking around town asking questions about some girl up in the hills by the Patterson Ranch night before last. Ain't that when you and Trilby and Doc was out all night? No, I don't think... By God, it may be... No, it's more like... Uh... You, on the other hand, it just might have... Nope, I'm pretty sure. Oh, shut up! Yes, sir, Sheriff. I'll, uh, reconnoiter the town and report back about the Bixby girls. And any other varmints I, uh, run across. Hello, girls. Hello, Walter. Well, well, you haven't been to town for quite some time. I understand you've been asking questions all over town about a certain peculiar happening in the hills the other night. Paul sent us in to use our feminine wiles to find out who is responsible. But we didn't ever have to use our feminine wiles, whatever they are, because everybody in town knows it was you, Doc, and Trilby. And they're all laughing about it. Which Paul ain't gonna like at all. He'll be in town looking for you, Mordecai. We wouldn't tell Paul, but he'd find out about it anyway. I don't want to kill you, Mordecai. At least. You don't think you'll have to kill Barry and the boys, do you, Mordecai? Oh, well, I don't want to kill anyone, girls. I'm against that kind of stuff. Yeah, let me help you. You girls are just going to have to talk to your pa. Oh, no, that wouldn't do no good, Mordecai. He'd draw on us. Well, he'd make us sleep in the barn. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to see that happen. Uh, don't worry, girls. I'll, uh, I'll think of something. Bye.
Well, did you charm the girls? I don't know if I charmed anybody, but I did find out that one of our little threesome of the other night hasn't been able to keep his mouth shut and has been blabbing things all over town. Trilby talk. But let's just say that I know I didn't, and I don't think Trilby did. So who does that leave? You mean me? Uh, it doesn't matter, because when the showdown comes with the Bixby's... Thank you, Matt. I know I can count on you, Doc. Oh? <laughs> to do what? Why, to be right at my side, all during the shootout. But if you're going to depend on somebody who shoots like me, you're already dead. Not necessarily. Even if you don't hit anything, you can just throw yourself in between me and the Bixby's, and I can shoot at them from behind you. Shoot at them from behind Are you sure you got everything the same as you did the last time? Hmm? Exactly the same, and I'm putting them in a pot in the exact same water. Where'd you get the rabbits? I went out and shot it just like before. There she goes! You've got me acting like an idiot. Running away from a rabbit stew. Well, it did sound kind of spooky. What's left? Just a rabbit cut up into chunks. Well, ease it in gradual. When did it blow last time? The second I put the rabbit in. Well, see? First time was just a fluke. So we have rabbit stew for supper tonight. <laughs> I'm just glad nobody saw us in that kitchen, scared to death of that stupid stew. They put us away for good. I just hope to stop some of those awful rumors that were going around about me. sell her house and build a new one. What do I care what that old crow does? She said after you're married, she doesn't think it'd be fair to ask you to live in the same house where she and the late Mr. Beaver dwelled in such connubial bliss. After we're what? I don't make these things up. I just report them the way they're told to me. And I'd like to know what in the hell cannibal bliss she's talking about. Half the town thinks she did away with Fred Beaver herself to get her hands on that silly virgin mine. I'm surprised you'd even consider settling down with her, new house or not. I've never considered! You're not going to think everything's so humorous when I tell you who's in town. The Bixby's. Yeah, but do you know why? To kill you and me. Not you and me. You. Now, that's what you heard. You only heard half the story. Mary Murph Bixby gave it to me straight this morning. She said the old man feels that they just killed me. You can always appoint another deputy. Go to hell! You know what's going on in town? I think so, but I'd like to hear from you. The Bixby's are in town, going from one saloon to another, getting more and more liquored up, talking about how they're going to kill you. And you. And me. You too. Huh? Just because I let you talk me into that dumb thing in the hills the other night. Well, I am sorry, Doc. But the sheriff and I got the last two seats on the stage that's leaving in uh, 39 minutes. They said they don't expect any more cancellations. You know, you might just head for the hills on your horse. No, oh, the Bixby's know every inch of that territory. Where you might hide. No, oh, that's the first place they look. You mean you two are going to just take out and leave this town to the mercy of the Bixby's? Not us two. I may have to take a little business trip. You're the sheriff. I'm the deputy. You're the leader. Where you lead, I follow. But it's to San Francisco or to a shootout with the Bixby's. Now you make up your mind. All right, now. The way I figure, the three boys, Pa Bixby and the two hired hands, they're six, are three. How do you figure three? 
You want to let the sheriff and I get killed and have to face them all alone? But you know how I shoot. I've been practicing all my life, and I ain't never hit one thing yet. You can shoot pretty fast, Doc. I've seen you. But I won't ever hit nothing. Maybe your luck will change today. Anyway, even if you just took a couple of the bullets that were meant for me, it'd be an enormous help. Deserters will be shot. More than once. After all them years, all them gunfights, I wonder what's the bullet that's finally going to get me. I just hope it ain't one of mine. Where are they now? They're in the mint. Drinking a lot? Everything inside, but it don't seem to have affected them none yet. I'll tell John, the bartender, that from now on, all the Bixby's drinks are on the house, and I'll pick up the charges later. Well, I hope getting them drunk ain't your only plan, because I've seen the old man drink for three days straight and still be able to shoot the eye out of a chicken at 50 feet. I didn't know that, Ed, but I sure am glad you thought to tell me now. Go on, son. You better get home, too. Do you know what having them Bixby's in town mouthing off has done to my business today? No, but what say the two of us go over to the Met and chase them all out of town? I don't even think that's funny. I don't even think so either. You've been, uh, wanting these back. Uh, let me, let me put it this way, Max. I've been watching you, and I've been getting the feeling that you wouldn't mind Settling down in our little town. Now, if you do want to become a part of our community, I, uh, I can't see where it hurts you to step in and help out in a crisis now and then. I mean, I don't think the people of this community would be likely to forget a thing like that. The people of this community could watch the Bixby's wipe you out right before their eyes, and not even miss a meal. I have to admit, there's an element of truth in what you say. The people of this community could watch the Bixby's wipe me out right before their eyes and not even remember my name five minutes later. Now, Max, I think that's going a little far. What's the matter? Everybody run out on you? Not at all. Even now, Doc and the sheriff are just spoiling for a fight. Well, spoiling, anyway. You got the nerve to ask me for help. Max, with the spot I'm in, I have the nerve to try anything. All right. I'll help you out. You will? Why? Well, I ain't exactly crazy about you, but uh, them Bixby's, I can't stand at all. Besides, I ain't forgetting how you helped me out with them two Jaspers that were uh, looking for me. You and me and the sheriff and Doc against the Bixby's? <sighs> Maybe I ought to leave the other two behind. No, if nothing else, they make it look like more people on our side. Hold it. You let him talk you into this. You know how big a fool you are? No, but I think I'll be getting a hint in the next 10 minutes or so. How much you take in in a year, Harry? A nice, thriving business like this? You go to hell. That much, huh? Poor guy. They'd already left the saloon. Now they're down at the old corral waiting for you. They said if you don't come down there, they're gonna come looking for you. What do you want to do? Go after them or have them come after us? Let's go after them. I can't take too much time off from the store. Go tell the Bixby's we'll pick up Doc and the sheriff and be down there inside of 15 minutes. Right. You're taking Doc to the shootout, would you? Well, he'd scare the Bixby's to death if they thought he was coming to work on their teeth. Don't let him carry a gun, just a pair of pliers. Are you ready? No. Are you? No. Well, let's get going anyway. I thought I'd made a deal with you, Lord. I'd go to church whenever I could, and in return, I wouldn't have to go through no more of these horrible experiences. Yay! Come on, you can do it! You can do it! You've always got the Bixby's worried! Yay! Max Mordecai! They've only got two hands apiece, no more! Ah!
I think she's already wrote me off. Maybe they won't even show up, Paul. No. Then watch them there. I'll lose my little mind. We got the old sheriff and Doc. 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 Old Doc could be the most dangerous one of them, Paul. What? He's shooting at the moon and wipe us all out down here. All right, now. Spread out. It's not going to be easy to root him out of there. Then why bother? Now look, you. I didn't want any part of this thing. But now that I'm in it, I want you to know that if the men on either side of me turn yeller and leave my flank exposed, I switch sides like that. Now let's get this thing over with and find out which one does live through it. I'm prepared to offer you a chance to surrender because it's a good possibility innocent people could get hurt. Now, my advice get is... Get it, boy! Put anything to move!
it for you, Pa. Yeah. Hurry up. <laughs> Come on, Billy Joe. Let's go. To do this, uh, I told him. I said that deputy had put us in jail. Uh, didn't I say that? I don't no, Paul. Oh, you... Him or us? You know who shot you? I think so. Kill him myself. Who was it? You. anymore. Her husband's been dead for over 15 years. Not this one. This one looks like he's got 20 or 30 pretty good years still left in him. What are you talking about? Where do you hide that you don't hear these things? I know you were invited to the wedding. I was there. What invitation? What wedding? The wedding last night when Harry and Mrs. Beaver got married. What did he want with that old camel? What did that old camel want with him? She said to tell you that as wedding presents, they want stuff to furnish the new house. I fried hell a thousand years before I find them major lovebirds, one lousy pit pot. If that thing goes off, I'll kill you. Hey, what are we? Hey, this is a crummy jail hey, out of sure. Oh, I'm hungry. Come on, let's go. We've got a whole new rule around here. He who shoots holes in the roof fixes those holes himself. You'll notice this time they're over your desk. You see the account of the fight in the territorial enterprise? They call it the gun battle of the old corral. I'm part of history now. You going down the depot to see Trilby and Max off? You mean Harry and Mrs. Beaver? I mean all of them. What are you talking about? Trilby and Max got so carried away by the romance of the moment that they got the preacher to marry them then and there. Not only that, before Harry recovered from the excitement, he made Max a full partner. <laughs> and I'm going to take care of the store for him while they're in Europe. Max is a full partner. And he's got 50 witnesses to prove it when Harry tries to weasel out of it. <laughs> I gotta get down to the station. I won't miss this for anything. I'll tell him you sent your best wishes. <laughs> You've done a real smart thing taking back this gun away from him so he'd have to stay in town. And I always admired the way you kept fighting that girl off when she was throwing herself and her money at you. <laughs> While you was dreaming about the gold field, back up the richest claim you'll ever have. <laughs> I told you to 
to fix them holes. <laughs> Oh. 